Welcome, this is a major scale modes guitar lesson and in this video we're going to get the guitar modes explained for you. We're going to go over three things, what the modes are and also what defines the sound of each mode, how to practice them to really understand them well. There's many ways but there's, I'm going to recommend one that I think works really well and the third thing is we're going to talk about why should we even learn the modes and what's an actual practical use for using them once we understand what they are. So those are the three things about guitar modes that we're going to learn. Let's get into it. All right, so there's two ways to think of modes. You can think of them as parallel or relative. So if we look at this, what's called the Ionian mode here, that is just the major scale, actually. So don't worry about it being called Ionian unless you really want to remember those names. It is the major scale. Um, a relative mode would be if we think of all these as numbers, and this first note here is the root and then all the numbers, therefore it's one. We have one, two, three, four. This is just basic. We just need to understand the structure of the major scale to do pretty much any other music theory. So three, four, and seven, and one have a half step uh, apart, and everything else is a whole step, and that's how I like to think of that. A relative mode would be if we say, hey, what if we call six one? We keep all the exact same notes and we just move the numbers. That's what a relative mode is. So a lot of people think of this as, okay, call six one, and then you have two, and then three, well, that's, these are the same note uh, on the fretboard. And so that's three again, and then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven. All I want you to know here is if you move the numbers but keep the exact same notes, that's a relative mode. This is very commonly uh, a common way to think of modes. And if we did this, if we called six one and played, played that as the root, that is actually the natural minor scale. And that means that we're playing the sixth mode of the major scale. And I'll get into all the modes here in a sec. You can see these other diagrams here. So that's thinking in relative. I'm actually, I'm skating over that kind of quickly because I'm gonna encourage you to understand the modes in a parallel way. So I want you to think of the modes totally as their own structure, as their own unique sound and just their own scale. So yes, they happen to be um, a structure that is a permutation of the major scale in terms of the major scale modes, but really thinking of it totally as its own sound is the way that we're gonna go for. So again, I'm gonna label this major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And again, that is the, the basis of all our music theory that we're gonna talk about. Really anything that's different from that, we need to label what's different. So I'll show you up here, this mode, that's called Lydian mode, one, two, three. Well, four is usually right there, right next to three and a half step apart. But this time, four is a half step up. So we have to call it sharp four. So that's my point there. Anything that's different than this, we have to say whether it's sharp or flat when it's different from that. So the major scale is our measuring stick to compare everything else against. This is really going to be something you use forever, thinking of it that way. Any kind of chord tone, is it a flat three on a chord? Is it a natural six or a flat 13 or a flat nine or a natural nine? And those are those are other terms that we'll get to later. But thinking of everything as how is it different than the major scale? If relative modes are thinking of the exact same notes and moving the numbers around, parallel modes are keeping the root exactly where it is and moving the notes around. So you're keeping the root as, let's this note happens to be F on the guitar, and I'm showing them all off of the same note and changing the numbers. So the Lydian mode here, which we're, which I'm also labeling, I'm telling you it's the fourth mode of the major scale, that has a sharp four, and that's how it's different from the major scale, and that's the only thing that is different. So we're thinking of Lydian as its own sound, and the defining note is the sharp four and we will circle that. As far as it being the fourth mode, what that means in the relative scale is that if you take four of the major scale and you call it one, and then you number everything accordingly, look what happens. You can see what's going on right here. One, two, three. Well, three and four in a major scale are supposed to be next to each other, but that four is actually up a half step, and we have to call it sharp four and five. So you see, oh, if you call 4-1, it creates this. It creates that structure. And then that structure, I just simply moved over to starting on this first fret so we can see it as parallel. So from now on, I'm just mostly gonna be talking about parallel. Because, and you'll understand that if you see like down here, it says fifth mode of the major scale, that just means if you call 5-1, 
and that make all the numbers from there, it's going to be this same structure. But I'm encouraging you to think of it on its own. What does Mixolydian mean on its own? What does that scale mean on its own? You can still know that it's the fifth mode of the major scale, but I want you to hear it as its own sound. And that's where the usefulness is going to come from, because a big question is, well, if it's all the same notes, you know, if you call 6-1 and change all the numbers around, but you have the same notes, that makes them a minor scale. Well, why are they actually different? It's how you treat them. It's treating something as the root, and it, it being the root and having a more prominent sound, that really makes it the mode. So just like we have this one difference between the major scale and the Lydian scale, we're going to have just one note being one half step difference for the next one as well, for Mixolydian. One, two, three, four all good, everything is the same as major, same as major. Oh, seven is down a half step. We have to say that that is flat seven. And that's one again. All right, so that is the defining characteristic sound of Mixolydian. And here we see the seven is a half step down. So what I'm doing here is I'm linking the Lydian mode being one note, one half step difference from the major, and I'm linking the Mixolydian mode as being one note, one half step from the major. So starting with major and knowing that, oh, sharp four makes a certain sound, makes Lydian, and oh, changing it to flat seven makes a certain sound. Um, and again, whether you have the labels memorized or not really matters less than, oh, there's a, there's a scale type that has a sharp four. You know, know what the sound is makes, a lot of people know the names and even know the structure, but I want you to see it on the fretboard and understand how to play that structure and know the sound of it. So we said if you call 6, 1 and change all the numbers around, you get natural minor. Well, that natu natural minor structure will be what I have written out down here. So this is Aeolian. That's the same as natural minor. And that is the same as the sixth mode of the major scale. Let's number them. 1, 2. OK, 2 to 3 is usually a whole step. So we have to say flat 3 because we, we have to say what's different than the major scale. 4, 5. 6 is usually here. So we have to say flat six. Okay. Seven is usually right next to one. So we have to say that this is a flat seven. And there you have it. That is the spelling of the natural minor scale. One, two, flat three, flat six, flat seven. Okay. So that's used for the primary scale of a minor key. Now I'm jumping to that next because now the scale that I have written above this that is called Dorian, or the second mode of the major scale, and the scale that I've written below this that is called, see it there, Phrygian, and the third mode of the major scale, those are both just one note being one half step difference from this scale. So if we know the major scale, and we know the natural minor scale, and then figure out, oh, there's three major type scales that have major thirds, and how are they slightly different than the major scale, these other two modes, Lydian and Mixolydian. And oh, there's going to be three minor scales that have a minor third, a flat three. And how are these two modes next to the minor scale different from natural minor? So everything being one half step different. Now, I know this might be a lot and it's explained in a different way than usual, but the way I'm going to have you practice it will be the thing that drives it home. And that's the key to really all of our theory understanding as guitarists, we want to see it, hear it, feel it on the instrument, on the fretboard. So if you don't do the exercise, it's really a, not a complete uh, lesson. And you can watch through this and kind of get the idea, but I want you to do the actual practicing as well, which we're going to get to in a second. So Dorian is one, two, flat three, because that's different than major, four, five, six, flat seven, and one. So what we have here is a defining characteristic sound of natural six because that's the one half step difference from the natural minor. Yes, it has flat three. That's crucial too. It has flat three and natural six, but as a minor scale, that natural six is what is unique about it. The Dorian scale. It's a minor scale with a natural six. Let's label the next one. One, we can see right away, pull this up. We can see right away. Oh, two is right next to one. That's interesting. Flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and one. Okay. That flat two is the is the weirdo. So that's what's different here. And true is natural before, 
and now it's flat too. That's the defining different sound of Phrygian. Yes, it's very important that it has a flat six as well, and of course a flat three, but we're saying as a minor scale, flat two is the defining characteristic. And then we do just happen to have, because there are seven modes, because there's a mode for each note, if you call each major scale note, seven notes in the major scale, if you call each one one, you get a different sequence and, and series and structure. So Locrian is the seventh mode. One, whoops, not flat seven, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven, one. So this has flat five, is the is the thing that's really different but also flat two is important this scale is is again the oddball out because it's not one half step note difference from either natural minor or the major scale as we saw above so it's just kind of its own beast however it follows the same pattern of simply one note the five here goes down a half step to create the flat five making this the locrian mode from where we were before which was phrygian all right, let's talk about how to practice these. I know this is a lot to take in, but it's all about the way you practice it. And I wrote it out in this order because that's what the extra, that's what makes the exercise actually really simple. So first off, you have to know your major scale. You have to know the structure of that. So I want you to practice uh, off of this first fret. You can do it on any string, but just the low string is great if in doubt, um, or low string or, or the top string are kind of the best ones to do it off of. But let's just say you're doing it off this low string like I'm recommending, and you just need to be able to go up and down and really know, oh, that's one, that's two, that's three. Now, a lot of people will say, you know, do a whole step and a whole step and then a half step and then a whole step. I don't like that because it's true. It's a fact that that's how the structure is, but it just forces you to think, you know, what's next, what's next, instead of seeing the whole view. The whole view is that you have a half step between three, four, and a half step between seven and one. And you can just remember that. Oh, a half step between three, four, half step between seven and one. Everything else is a whole step. And then you'll know one to two, oh, a whole step. Two to three, okay, that's a whole step. Three, four, oh, that's one of my half steps. So know the major scale really well. Now, this is gonna be useful for building chords off of each of these up, up and down the neck as well. That's step one. Now, once you get that, we're actually gonna start the exercise, the modes exercise, with Lydian, okay? So you're gonna say, what is that scale that I start with that is actually has a note? One of the notes is a half step higher than the major scale. And of course we see that that's the sharp four there. So it's a major scale with a sharp four. You're gonna play that first up and down. You're gonna go play the root, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, one, and then back down, of course. Once you do that, you shift over and then you play the major scale and you will hear how that four changes, okay? So then you play one, two, three, you go up and down the major scale. Once you do that, you go to the Mixolydian scale. And you see I have these arrows here. So from where you were, you're flatting a note every time. One, two, three, four, five, six, play the flat seven, and you'll get that, Mixolydian. So from Mixolydian, you go down to play minor, uh, Dorian minor, I mean. And of course, you can do this nice and quickly once you get used to it. After Dorian, you play Aeolian. You're going to be used to what are the notes I just played? Okay, this time I flat the six, up and down. Okay, next scale, this time I flat the two, keep all the rest how they were. Okay, next scale, this time I flat the five, keep all the rest how they are. And once you do that on Locrian, you are done. Okay, so it's something that you can get used to really easily and I want you to have it memorized as much as possible. It can be a little theory warm up. It's obviously not technically hard to play. If you don't know what fingers to use, I, I actually really recommend you just use your first finger for the whole scale, for every scale, for every note in this entire exercise. Because it's not about uh, doing a specific fingering with the left hand or jumping positions, just playing the notes, first finger every time. And so this could be an amazing kind of mental theory warm up, fretboard warm up, seeing these half steps. It's also really good for your ear. So you can hear the difference between the modes and hear, oh, that's what it sounds like when the flat three changes, or that's what it sounds like with when that has that natural six versus having that flat six. Big time ear training bonus is if you do this by singing the root note and kind of holding that as a drone and then playing the notes above. Uh, so you have to kind of hold that note and then hear how does four sit against that root note? How does five sit against that root note? Because the way things sound against the root is exactly the sound of tonality. It's exactly the sound of what mode you're on and what makes it sound like a mode or a scale or a key or anything.
double, double ear training bonus is if you hold this note on the guitar and just keep playing it as a drone note and you sing these notes. Extra challenge. If you're a singer, definitely give it a try. If you're interested in a super helpful ear training exercise and interested enough in singing, absolutely try that and let it be super hard, but it's amazing for your ears because obviously you don't have frets with your voice. You have to hear, am I singing the three when I'm holding this root here? Does it sound like that? Does it sound like the four? Does it sound like the five? That's actually one of the secrets to then hearing if someone else is playing, ooh, sounds like you know, it's minor because I heard the flat three against the root and then, oh, there's a natural six and, and that means it's Dorian. So if you do this exercise, you will have a thorough understanding of each mode of the major scale. All right, lastly, why are we learning these in the first place? Of course, you can just get an understanding of the structure of music, the theory, just, just the DNA of, of the major scale. This is just, these are just true permutations that exist. Um, so just if you're curious about the theory, of course, that's great. This is, information is also used often for improvising over chords. So every note of a scale has a chord that's built off of it. Off the one of the scale is a one chord, off the two is a two chord, three chord, four chord. If you add notes to each of those uh, scale notes, you get a chord. So therefore, there's seven notes in the scale, and then there's seven chords that can be built off of it as well. When you see Roman numerals written, that means that you're, it's indicating the chord. So off the four is a four chord, off the five is a five chord, off the six is a six chord, etc. This little circle means diminished because that chord built off the seven happens to be diminished. So when people say, oh yeah, the one, four, five progression, that's what they're talking about. So therefore, if the five chord is being played in a song, people will sometimes think of, oh, it's the chord off the five, so I'll play the fifth mode of the scale and think of the root of the chord uh, as the root of the mode and then play around with it that way. There are definitely competing schools of thought as to whether or not that is the best way to approach improvising, but neither is right or wrong. It just works for some people and not for others. Another reason is ear training, which I already talked about how amazing this can be if you apply it in the right way for ear training. But the biggest reason that I want you to understand is actually related to these uh, chords in the key, but not necessarily for the sake of improvising, more for the sake of chord tone theory and understanding what notes are in chords. If you've ever heard people talk about, oh, play the third of the chord or add the seven to the chord, or that's the nine of the chord, or the, you know, where's, find your, the fifth of the chord, that can be understood by understanding this modal stuff that we're talking about. Because if we have a one chord and a two chord and three chord and four chord and five chord, et cetera, what's happening here is that we have the scale certainly that it all comes from, and that's often referred to as the parent scale, and all the chords are born out of it. But once you're talking about a chord, like you're talking about the two chord, yes, you have your parent scale, and this is the second note of the scale, but that second note of the scale is the root of that chord. So therefore, that second note of the scale is the one of the chord. And that means that all the other numbers shift around two. This note would be the two or the nine, those are the same thing, of the chord. And this note would be the three, specifically the flat three, of the chord. So you see, oh, that's how we could find chord structure by understanding if you know that Dorian mode or, and understand, oh, that's the second mode of the scale, those numbers correspond with what the chord tones can be on a minor chord that specifically is the second chord of a key, the two chord of a key. So we have two levels going on. We have the level of the parent scale and we have just the numbers there, and they're fixed. That is not changing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have the level of the chord, where if it's the two chord, the, the two there, which is going to remain the two of the scale, the parent scale, it's now the root or one. When you zoom into the level of the chord, we have to change all those numbers around, and that's exactly what the mode is. So what I have here for us is our one chord, two chord, three chord. I have all the chords in the key of C major. And these are the triads that exist, triad being the primary three note chord that has one, three, and five in it. So, okay, the one chord in the key of C major, easy enough, the root of that is just the same as the root of the parent scale. But like we just talked about, the two chord in the key of C major, the root of it, and you see I have a little, have an R there to say the root, that's one of that chord. It's still two of the scale, but that's one of that chord. So, oh, well, I have things listed out here. 
I have the flat three written. Oh, that's the flat third. That's the chord tone that is the flat three of D minor. And how do we know? Well, we're on the two chord and we know that. And then we know, okay, a whole step up would be two. That happens to be here or over here. And then a half step away from that is flat three. So I've created this sheet specifically to show what kind of notes can be added and manipulated around with a normal chord that you might be used to, uh, what other notes are available within that key. And the way we can know that is from all that modes information. This is supposed to be, the, sh the point of having a sheet for it is supposed to be like, hey, give me a shortcut for interesting chords I can add replacing a normal chord. If you're playing a D minor and you know it's the two chord of a key, you could play this chord instead. And it will function the same way, but just have kind of maybe a more interesting sound. Here's the thing, because this is a two chord, this column that we're looking at here, there's a natural six in the Dorian scale. It's the only mode that has flat three and natural six. Well, therefore this chord can work. Uh, it's a super interesting chord. It's just your, your D minor chord. There's a root, there's a flat three, and there's a fifth. That's a normal minor chord. But then it has a natural six. Now, that's significant because this adding a six row here, you know, on each of these chord types, can we add a six? Well, on the three chord, this is the three chord column, you cannot. You cannot add a six because the mode of the third mode, the Phrygian mode, has a flat six, not a flat, not a natural six. The A minor, the six chord, that's the column for the six chord, you also cannot because there's not a natural six, there's a flat six, okay? Same with the final chord, there's a flat six. So you can't, when I say, can you add a six over here? That's kind of what this row is. And oh, D minor, yes. The other minors, no. And you see how it works here with the majors. Oh, all the major chords, the one, the four, the five, they can all have sixes. Because those modes, the major scale has a natural six. The fourth mode has a natural six. This is the fourth mode column there and the fifth there has a natural six because we know the fourth mode is the same as major scale but just has a sharp four so all right six stays there and the fifth mode is the same as major scale but has a flat seven so the six is part of it too so the sheet is not meant to be this sheet is not meant to be like oh you have to understand the modes it's just giving us chord options and gives a ton of them down the column so here's the key of a major and same thing. So now it's just like, this is kind of for what are some interesting chords that I can get away from always playing this E shape. If you know it's five in the key, then you can play this shape too, or this shape, or replace it with this shape, or replace it with this shape, or replace it with this shape. So the point of this video is to talk about the modes, but since I just made this chord sheet, I wanted to show how the reason I know that I can say, if you're playing the five of a key, this chord is an option, the five chord of the key has a root, has a third, flat seven because mixolydian in that fifth mode has flat seven, and yep, it has a natural two you could throw in there too, and two and nine are the same thing. So the main takeaway is how to practice the modes just up and down the fretboard on a single string like I already talked about, and this concept of how it benefits our theory understanding of chords and extensions. Extensions are the numbers that are above seven, so like nine and 11 and 13. This chart is just something I want people to have as a as a helpful resource so you can actually get it by just going to my website soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color and that will get you a free pdf download of this exact sheet if you want to combine kind of thinking of how the modes relate to these ex different chord notes that you can add that's great and if not if you just want to use it as oh cool interesting chords that can be replaced with each other that's kind of the main purpose of the pdf especially for songwriters or for just kind of studying theory it's just a really good uh, way to go about that. All right, I hope you found that helpful for how to start understanding the major scale modes on the guitar, how to practice it, and especially how to use that information once you know it on chords, seeing chord tones, and what kind of interesting notes can be added to chords. If you wanna go a little deeper and practice the modes in even another way, I have another video, I'll put a link in the description to that. That's on how to practice the modes. Uh, in a way that's a little more related to improvising with them over appropriate chords. Again, if you want that free download of the Chords with Color sheet, just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.